plugs or whatever or redo the whole manifold, but at least understand how the thing that you're holding in your hands connects to the wheels. That kind of little bit of extra something. Maybe every single one of you reads call stacks all the time. Maybe you used to and you kind of stopped. But everything that you need is usually there. And that's why I'm kind of promoting to my wife and my sister and to you guys to maybe just go a little bit, a little bit farther down. Choose to be a little bit more of a plumber. You don't have to be Don Box and learn about, you know, move AX comma zero and, you know, that kind of level of stuff. But go a little bit deeper. So what can we learn about this transition here? Well, first we can see that it's calling an IHTTP handler. Oops, tooltips. You guys have probably made IHTTP handlers before. You use them to generate uh, graphics dynamically. You use them to download dynamically generated files of any kind. IHTTP handler is kind of the most fundamental atom of ASP.NET proper. There are people who have never used it. There are people who just make pages. They make a page, they double click on a page, and then page load happens. Except that's not really web programming. That's programming to a particular abstraction. We'll talk a little bit about what web forms values versus what MVC values. They value different things. In this case here, I can learn just by looking at this that I HTTP handler, and there's also async handler, as you can see, which has basically one method, process request. That's the do it method inside of ASP.NET. That is a public thing. I've done it. You've made HTTP handlers. So right now, I'm feeling good already walking through this call stack because it means that the ASP.NET MVC team didn't um, know something. They don't have like internal kernel knowledge of ASP.NET. They didn't pick a secret interface that we don't know about to connect in. They're playing like the rules. They're playing by the rules. They're using all the public interfaces we already used, which means that ASP.NET MVC is possibly closer to what I already know than I thought. Blah, 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 process request. Then we make a transition between MVC handler and controller base. So someone looks at that URL, slash home, and now suddenly I'm in the base class of a controller. Well, I remember that my controller is called the home controller. So there's probably a mapping between home and home controller. And then suddenly there's action invoker, right? Probably invokes actions. S they made my controller, and they, what we say, they nude it up. They made, they said new home controller. And then they called the, in this case, the poop method of that controller. Blah, 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 blah. And then I'm there. Boom. Yellow screen of death. So we made a new method called poop. We said slash home slash poop. The method got called. And now we're here. The view, poop or its master. <laughs> It just tickles me every time. I come all the way here just to make that one joke, and it's not even a good joke. The following locations were searched. It's always nice to get a yellow screen of death that actually tells you exactly what's going on. I looked here, and I looked here, I looked here, and I looked here. Where did it get the name poop from? Why is it saying view poop? I had a method. Okay, well, it's obviously taken the name of the method. So this means that if you say return view, then it's going to look at the name of that method. And it's going to just assume. I said, return view. All right? And it looked in two places. And this is really interesting. It looked in slash view slash home. And it looked in slash view slash shared. So that's interesting. That means that I can have shared views. That means I can have a home controller and a foo controller and a bar controller. And they could all potentially share the same view. And I can see also that that shared view gets called second, secondary. It gets called after we can't find the more specific one. So that's interesting, too. That lets me know that there's a lot of convention going on inside of ASP.NET MVC. This is a big driving, um, driving um, philosophy of ASP.NET MVC. 
which is convention over configuration. This is literally conventional. It went looking in the home folder for the poop method because we're in a home controller and we have the poop method. And that's, that's it. There's no config file that describes that yet. So that's interesting. So I could go back here and I could type in, let's go ahead and say stop debugging and we'll say index. Because we have a view called index up here already. We've used before. See if that works. And I'll type in. So that works. Or I could make a specific view. I could say add view. So now there's a file here. All right. So now we have our three circles. Well, we didn't do model, though. So with ASP.NET MVC, there technically isn't a model because it's kind of it's Microsoft VC. But that doesn't kind of come off the tongue quite as nicely. We actually used to ship the models folder empty. You probably may have noticed that. With, with things like Ruby on Rails, Ruby on Rails is uh, an application framework that is good at making web applications that talk to databases, period. So it's not really, sometimes you'll hear comparisons, like comparing .NET to Ruby on Rails. That's not really fair. And then you could say, well, ASP.NET, and compare that to Ruby on Rails. And that's not really fair either, because one is much larger than the other. Here you could potentially compare ASP.NET MVC to Ruby on Rails, except Ruby on Rails prescribes the way that you talk to the back-end model. They, they have a very specific way to talk to models. It's starting to open up a little bit. But with, with ASP.NET, your model could be anything. So we don't actually prescribe how you talk to the model. The model could be a database. It could be a web service. It could be an AS400 or, a, or a, a, I don't know, DB2 database. It could be whatever you want. We'll talk about models in a second, but one of the things that we've neglected to talk about actually was the notion of routing. Because I kind of fibbed a little bit at the beginning. We said slash home slash about, and we got to the home controller and the about method. But we got there not just because of convention, but because of something that sits between the convention and us. The notion of a route. You'll see in ASP.NET MVC that there's a separation of concerns. This is a, a term that you'll hear Scott Goo say all the time, keeping things separate. You'll also hear the term single responsibility principle, that he wants things to have one job and one job only. So the controller's job is to control stuff. It's not to manage the database, and it's not to render views, and it's not to figure out how URLs are routed to it. It's important to think about that initial demo there where we saw the home controller and the about method get called because it just happened. It was a miracle. It was a miracle from the perspective of the home controller. The controller doesn't know how anyone made it. In web forms, 